So, you know, I actually want you to ask me some questions, but let me just start off by saying this because yeah. I've, because of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, I've been in South Africa since 2003. I came here because of my work in the audio drama and uh, Zane Ibrahim from Bush Radio, Peace and Blessings on His Eternal Soul. He uh, he saw me, was it was, it was, it was in Ma Milan, Italy. Yeah. I did this, uh, what I used to do with these, uh, is this conference of the, uh, the World Association of Community Broadcasters mm -hmm. had these conferences and for a, a while. I think I first encountered them in the early 90s. And every four years they have these conferences. But because I do audio drama, what I would do in the conference, because it was so tense and everything like that, I would create an audio drama and present it like the the, the day before, the day before the last day, we'd pre pre or the night, whatever, we'd present it. Okay. And so, you know, so used to, that's what I do. So this one in Milan, Italy, this one, uh, it was a really contentious conference, but right before I had left the States, and by then, I think I had already, did I already quit my job? I think I already quit my job at BAI, so I was just traveling. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, just before I left, I got, there's a play by uh, 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 George Wolfe, the guy that just did uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, that directed Ma Rainey, the, the film. Well, he, he's really uh, head of the Shakespeare, he was headed, I guess he still was head of the um, uh, New York, New York Shakespeare Festival, uh, uh, Joseph Papp Theater down there in Lafayette Street down in, in Manhattan. And I know when he first got in, fact, I know how he got there. That's really, I won't say that right now. That's sort of cutthroaty how he did that. Anyway, uh, so I've known him for a long time, but he did this play called The Color Museum. That's what made him famous. He was he presented, presented at another place uh, called uh, Crossroads Theater at, at, in New Brunswick, New Jersey, which is um, New Brunswick. That's where I basically did my, my undergraduate work. And um, I actually went to a uh, graduate school for playwriting there in that same area because I went to undergrad from Livingston College, part of or part of Rutgers University, Livingston College, uh, and then my graduate work was done at uh, Mason Grove, and they changed the Mason Grove School of Arts, and I don't think they changed to something else right now. But um, but I did, I, but I didn't take my degrees for masters for, for playwriting. I did everything but put in my dissertation, which was to write the play. The simplest thing for me, because I would write plays like a like a bandit. That was easy for me to do. But somehow, I just didn't do it. And then I realized what later, I have a strange life, man. Somebody once said, somebody recently said, you know, Anthony, you've had an extraordinary life. And, you know, you if you're, in the, if you're in the middle of a hurricane, you don't really know what's going on. You know what I mean? So I'm going like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I tend not to listen mm -hmm. to stuff like that. But what happened, for some reason, I didn't want a degree. Now remember, this is this is like this is like nineteen seventy nine, like that, which would make me what's called an, a a buppy, you know what I mean? Clean shaven, you know, um, you know, this guy's gonna go on to the you know great things, he's gonna work for ABC or CBS or, or he's gonna be a great play whatever he's gonna be. But you know, back then, more than likely, I would have been I would have been teaching, you know, theater at some college. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 No offense against that, but that's that's yeah. what probably what what would have happened. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, but it turned out the best because had I done that, then I wouldn't have been in audio drama. It's as simple as that. I wouldn't have been doing plays on radio. Yeah. And that's there's more to it than that. But let me just move on. Yeah. Um. So because of that, that became my life. My life work, I guess, it was just, it's just to be an audio dramatist, not to do to do a radio drama, but they call radio dramas. Um, so anyway, so I was in Milan and and we're doing this George Wolf play, and it, this was like an international cast, you know, because it's people all over. So it, it was to take the basic basically is a black play talking about stuff, right? And so I cast people from all over. It when the plus because it's radio drama, you know, they don't have to do anything. They're on. They're on. Yeah, more more of the things, whatever have you. Well, it's fine. It's fine. Um, uh, so, so, uh, so I I cast you know basically this black play with all this international cast. You know, we have people from England. You know, all you, you, get, you know, all kinds of stuff. Right? It was hilarious. <laughs> when I say hilarious, it was hilarious. The play is funny anyway, but then they have this international cast playing these other uh, these black characters. Not not black, it's just it's just a voice thing anyway. So Zane was in the in the audience, and there's there's this thing that they, they did at the at the um for some reason 
at the you have to have these oh for voting purposes you have to put up a paddle for like one of some some kind of thing that they did well when he was doing the play every once in a while there was this particular sister of oh, said well she was a, she was a uh, she's from England and I like, uh, 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 well she was white girl I'm just saying you know and she had a, a rack you know what they call you know so we kind of they put up. Ten or whatever like that. It was. It, it, let, me, let me put. And I always put a uh, what we call a uh, audience participation in there. Somehow have the things where you applaud or you you groan or whatever. Put up the sign like that. So it was this really a really good thing. It broke the tension. All the pressure of the conference. It was really a very pressure conference. It just was a relief to have and have that. So anyway, so at the end, uh, so Zane says, "I gotta get you down to South Africa. You gotta come to Bush Radio," and I'm. No, I was still, no, I was still, uh, I was still arts director. I said, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm not, you know. Then people, I have this saying, I say, I believe you. But then again, I believe everybody. So every once in a while, he would call me. I said, yeah, I'm still working on it. You know, you got to come on down, blah, blah, blah. Say, yeah. So then, um, then, then make it a little quicker. I had my little incident with the C. I was working for democracy. I had an incident with a C. And so I was, you know, I was, I was paralyzed for three days. Then I walked. Then, then for ten days, I walked myself back to health. Then I was. Then I was later for a year in a neck brace, <laughs> like that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise that for anybody. Uh, I, but I was recovering in Silver Spring, Maryland, um, even though I'm from New York. But uh, I was. I was with the sister in Silver Spring, Maryland, and she had. She had this apartment, but she had uh, in her facility. She had a gym, and a sauna, and a, and a yeah, sauna. Like that, so I was basically for a year, recoup almost for a year, recuperated there. But then near the end of that, I moved down into a vegan house down in Washington D.C. But people, because I was Pacifica, a Pacifica station in New York is WBI, which is my station. I became arts director and everything like that. You know, all my training and all my you know all my stuff. A lot of you know a production engineer, a bunch of stuff. You know, I've been here since since eighty two, right? So so. Uh, so what happens is, and and like I said, I just had this incident with the C, uh, and I wasn't I wasn't gonna work for nobody, right? Mm -hmm. But then they started this program in Washington D.C. called Peace Watch, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they wanted they knew my pe people who know my work know my work. If you know me, then you tend to say ah, we gotta get him to do this, you know? <laughs> like I, so they wanted me to engineer for them. And no, uh, here's how they sucking me. I know they had an engineer, but this guy was a musician. He didn't really want to be there. I know why. After a while, but he 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 was going on vacation. He said, "Well, can you just fill in for him while he goes on vacation?" Right. Mm -hmm. So okay, but okay, fine. So I was still sort of you know whatever. So that's so that's what I did. And but near the end of that, and I think I started that in July or something like that. And then July, August, July, or July. And August, September, October. Okay, so about three, did that for about three months, I think. And then there was a they wanted to contract me to, to be a part of this thing. At the same time, at the same time, a uh, um, uh, a beautiful sister, Josefina Torres, on me She she knows what I did too, and she was uh, going to. She's a Dominican. She's uh, from Dominican Republic, but you know she 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 speaks French and English and Spanish and. And she also was like mm -hmm. a, a museum curator. I mean, she knew my work, mm -hmm. and she was going down there to work with some kids. Mm -hmm. So she said, "Well, you know, can you would you come down and help me? You know, you could do your audio drama. You know, by then I have my big reputation. But people who knew know. People don't know. They mm -hmm. don't know. In fact, I'm glad it's a little side. Somebody once said, "Are you?" Because they look at you know, because they look at me and said, "Are you famous?" I said, "Yes, but not in circles that you would know," <laughs> which is exactly <laughs> right. So. So at that, but at the same time, Zane says, "Oh, the Dutch gave us some money. You gotta come down." So now I'm thinking, okay, here's what I'll do, right? Because now remember, I'm just like a year and a half. I'm just recuperating from my little thing. I need to go on a healing mission, right? And so I had enough money too. I said, "Here's what I do. I go for three months down to South Africa, right? Then I get a, a worldwide ticket, you know, and I go around. You know, I go. I feel like I go to India. I go to." You know, Whatever, Nepal, I go to, you know, go to a bunch of places. Then they guys, well, you can't have a year ticket. They only go to 11 months. But what you can do, if you go to Thailand, you get in Bangkok, right? Then you can get a ticket and to continue from there. So, oh, great. Then I can go to, you know, I would go to Papua New Guinea. I, I, you know, I go to, you know, I 
go to Australia, I guess. I somehow go and I come back around the, the east, the, the west side of, of the, the west coast of of, um, of the states, and then come on back, and then perhaps get down to Josefina. So I'm like, that was my in my head. That's what was going to happen. Well, obviously, it didn't work out that way. But um, so, anyway, so 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 I did this workshop for. It's, it's, to tell you the truth, this is the first time I ever had a, a contract like that. I was, I guess I was threatened with a contract with this other thing, but I don't sign contracts. I don't know what that is, right? I just do jobs. I do tasks. I don't even call them jobs. I do tasks because nobody pays me when I'm worth. So, and you can't pay me when I'm worth. You know, I'm sorry. I got to tell you a little side one to show you what I mean. One time I did, because when I came back out of, out of, out of graduate school, but not, not taking the degree, but I went, was going back to theater and I was doing a lot of playwriting at the time. I'm not, I'm not playing, uh, uh, stage managing. Because I did a lot of plays. I was doing some stage management. One of the people I did for was uh, Miguel Algren. He was doing the New York Weekend Post Cafe. He was doing Born on a Play, someplace like that. And so Miguel knew my work. Plus, I knew me from BAI and stuff like that. And then everybody knows my, if you know me, you know more my engineering expertise, right? So he was doing this thing. I think it was the Queen of the Netherlands. I don't know, Queens. No, not the. One of those queens there in Norway. One of those queens up there, you know, one of those people up there. You know, the Blue Bloods that. First they were Visigoths, then became Blue Bloods. I don't know. First they were Savages, then became, I don't know how they, I don't know how they do it. But anyway, so she was doing some, it was a red, this, this was, again, this was the, this was the early 80s. Yeah, this is the mid, early, mid 80s. And yeah, mid 80s. And, uh, and it was the first time they was going to do this radio broadcast with poetry from the New York Post Cafe, poets from there, and poets uh, presenting in this other country, wherever country it was, I forget what it, which one it was. And they needed this ex, this ex. Then. So, so Miguel, <laughs> he takes me to this Italian restaurant, you know, Martha, Italian, you know, with the frescoes on the wall and stuff like that. So he's trying to fit me, you know, he's trying to, you know, you know, Anthony, uh, I know what he wants. He wants to know how much it's going to cost. That's what he wants to know, right? And like I said, nobody can pay me what it's worth. So you still, I, don't, I can't even give you, what I used to do is I used to put in kind. And I say, what am I? What, what, what they can afford it, then I would I would bump it up to what I'm worth, and that would be an in kind kind of thing, right? So you can see Miguel's being nervous about like the money, right? I said, well, I tell you what, Miguel, uh, there was a trip going to Cuba. I said, you know, I got to go to Cuba, so just the the, the, the airplane ticket or whatever the price to go to Cuba, that's what it would cost, right? Mm. Boy, was he relieved, you know? What I mean? <laughs> so those kind of things that I do, you know, I just because uh, money don't. Money matters to people because of my lifestyle, because of a bunch of stuff that happens. Mm. I don't, I don't deal with it, and I'm not in. I don't do debt and all that stuff. So, mm. so anyway, so 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 that's. I just wanted to tell you that 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 part just ex explain because a lot of people they know me, they think they know me, but a lot of stuff people the the stuff that people know about me, they don't know all the stuff that. In fact, to tell you the truth. When I when I got down, I, I did I was down here and when I gave uh, um, Bush Radio that uh, workshop, it was like it was supposed to be uh, I think a two for me I forgot me a two week three week I think a three week workshop or whatever mm -hmm. have you. And I'm looking at the contract. They said the expert. I'm looking around. So who's a, who, who did, what expert are they talking about? You know, I'm Anthony. I'm no I'm just Anthony, right? Here's the other thing. I used to tell people all the time. I said, well, anybody, anybody can do this radio drama stuff like that. And somebody, I remember clearly, the guy looked at me. He really gave me this look. He said, Anthony, nobody can do audio drama like you do it, okay? I just let it go. I just, I, it's weird because I, I can take compliments that I can't, I don't, they don't really filter the way you think it's going to filter. Don't like, it's just a piece of thing and I'm, I'm gone because I'm off to the next project. I don't care what you think, you know what I mean? I'm trying to do some stuff. So anyway, so, so, Basically, I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I gave him a three-month workshop. <laughs> Instead of three weeks, same price. I didn't care, you know. <laughs> and then I went on my little trip like like that. So, I mean, that's the way. I mean, this whole this whole money thing, I understand. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, Especially in this day and age, I really understand. I know what people are about. But for me, I I, I think, I, you know what it goes back to? Okay, I got it. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Then you got to ask me some questions for real. This whole money thing, especially, and it, it just hold everything travel. When I was about 12, 13 years old, somewhere, and I don't forget what the age I was, teenager, early teens, there was an old man in my family. He was born the same day I was. 
July 30th, he was born the same day, but he was older. I guess that was like, whatever age I was, I think 13, whatever age I was, he was like in his 60s or something like that. He had been a merchant marine, stuff like that. So he was reading. He's a, he's a, a reader. You know, he reads your palm and, you know, whatever. Not every family's got one of these kind of people. So it was a family function, and he was reading everybody. He started with the elder people and kept on going down, boom, 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 boom. So when he got to me, it was quite, you know, long in, in, the, in the day, I guess it was. He said, hold on, everybody, I want you to hear this. I'm going like, oh, I'm special. This is going to be nice, you know. <laughs> he said, and he talked just like I'm talking right now. He said, this boy will never have any money. Okay, now, Sheppy, let's think about this. You're in America, right? You're, you're, you're in a capitalist America. you like a teenager. And all, you, you, the last thing you want to hear is that you ain't got, you ain't going to make, you know, that's, you don't want to hear this, right? So, so I'm let down, but we go on, right? So it ends up, really, it just ends up to be true. I've had an extraordinary life. I have to admit that now. Okay? But, and I do it without money. There's this, there's this biblical saying, I think it's some sort of Corinthian, however they say, and in fact, Frederick K. Price, he just passed peace and blessings on his soul. It was his saying. He used to say, I walk by faith, or we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. Now, Sheppy, most Christians do not walk by faith. Okay? I don't care what they say. It's not, but I actually do that. I have no preconceived notions. I go, I don't know what propels me. I just go. I just do. I, mean, I travel the world without money. I do a bunch of stuff. There was this other thing that said, the guy read me, he said, you know, if you put the attire of any culture on, they'll let you in. And it's, it's been absolutely true. So, and, and even these things I'm telling you right now, I don't dwell on them. I don't really think about them. I'm just doing the next thing that I need to do. So right now, it's about, it's about you know, the stuff I'm working in in Baza. It, nothing else matters. I don't care. I don't care about money. I don't care about... Do, 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 do. I don't have no plans. I'm not looking for who goes, some sort of monumental success or, you know, I'm going to, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's like, oh, this is what we got to do now. Let's just go do this, you know? And that's what it is. That's just my work in Denbasa right now. So anyway, I'm open to any question that you should have, you know? <laughs> just spew it out and I'll try to answer as best yeah. as I can. Yeah. So and, uh, tell us a little bit more about the the, the work into the project in Denbasa. Oh, Okay. Now, first, if even that, how that happens kind of interesting. Uh, I was, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Did I finish? No, it happened. Oh, this was, uh, this is my grad, I was um, going to school at um, Fort Hare. And um, I wanted, I needed a research group. But I had rented this place, this guest house. It had all these TVs in it. And, uh, and we were just, I was, I was just, um, and, and where he, I had married Gary, so my wife, me, we were just there at the guest house, you know. And what happened was some guy walked by, because it was just space he walked by, and he just said something. And then I said, well, Where are you from? He says, From Dimbaza. I said, blah, blah, blah. He was a filmmaker, right? So he went to Dimbaza, you know, and then I, then I figured out, I'm going to make a long story kind of short, figured out Dimbaza would be a perfect group for me to be my research group to do all this audio drama with and mm -hmm. and like that. So I said, oh, this is this is good. So I remember this group, uh, Issa Tevis and this, uh, this group, you know, young young people, and they were they were interested in what I was what I was doing like mm -hmm. that. And so I said, okay, this would be a, a good research group, you know? So that, so um, I was to teach them sort of audio drama, some principles mm -hmm. like that, and then not teach them, but yeah, then see how they work with it. That would be part of my research paper. Mm -hmm. That's basically how I hooked up with Dimbaza. And once again, they were, they were sort of faster. Here's an American, black American, you know. I don't know how, hey, we're in the Eastern Cape, but we're, you know, in fact, right now, I'm, I'm not exact. For miles around, there are no so-called African Americans. For miles around, when I say miles, from East London <laughs> to, 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 to the colored people up there <laughs> in the fort or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, you know, right above Fort Hare. What's that name? What's the next town up there? I know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, you know. Oh, there's spas up there. Um, so there's nobody around. 
and so I was um so but I really started really get understanding what they were going through. In fact, it was my first understanding because you know when you first met them, I said, "Well, what's what's your name?" Now, okay, so people people start rattling off this whole long, you know, their whole lineage. You know, you know how you know close to all you know y'all be like from the clan, your clan, you all your clan thing. And I'm going like now. Remember at this particular point, I have been in Cape Town ten, eleven, like twelve years. Mm-hmm. No, no, I've been in Cape Town 10 years, I should say that. And then now it's, I'm up here in, in Fort Hare, so like that. But all this time with Cape Town, I never heard nobody rattle off all these, you know, this lineage name. They said, oh, yeah, no, we have them, but we don't do it when we're in the cities. You know, we're, like, no, when we're in Cape Town, Joburg, we don't really do that. You know, we just, what's your name? You know, so-and-so Lewis, you know, so-and-so, you know, whatever the, the name is. I like that, but they don't do the whole lineage thing. So I was fascinated. I said, really, right? Then I got this whole idea about lineage poems. I mean, you give, you give me something, and I'm gone with it. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I'm not into people look. At what, what's the money? This they look. I'm not into that. I'm not like, oh, this is fascinating. How can we uh, uh, attach this to? Basically, there's this thing that um, Sonia Sanchez I think says it's like, but will it free us? That's her her thing. Will it free us? And my thing is like, whatever it is. Oh. Well, yeah, how how could this be of service to us, you know? So that's what I actually look at. I don't really look at, and, you know, people, I understand the capitalist society, you got to just, but most people look at what, how much money can I make off of this? Even in academia, you know what I mean? You go like, you know, that's a whole, that's a whole thing with academia, you know? You could make loads of money. <laughs> they do this one little paper and then, you know, go to so many conferences and, you know, being an expert here and an expert there. No, you tell me. Remember that thing you was talking about, the expert, some kid for Andabas? Come on, tell us that story. No, you tell us, tell us that story about the Andabas. There, there's one of your kids was listening to the radio and there was an expert on Andabas on. Yeah. And then the kid, tell, tell us the story. Yeah. Oh, it was uh, uh, this one on. Uh, on these, uh, what what are they called now? These imbizos. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the imbizos, yeah. So the expert was on the radio and was talking about uh, and and giving a critique, you know, of imbizos and its limitations and this and that. And one of the uh, students who graduated in our course at CPUT uh, was now working for uh, the premier's office in the in the province in the Western Cape called. Uh, the radio station, the mm-hmm. program, and then said, look, you know, I just want to clarify certain things about Ibizos, and, and they did, and I think the expert took took him up on that, that look, but these Ibizos, they're like, uh, they, they kind of, uh, it's a, it's a, a, almost like a, a, a manipulation of sorts, you know, because the, the outcomes are manipulated, and okay. it's not, they're not genuine. And then the, the, the reporter asked the question to the expert, look, have you been to an imbizo? And the expert had never been to a single imbizo. Let me break here for part two. Let me 